I'm here right now with the LEC cows, and I've trained them to say welcome to the Late Parsha Show. Look at the camera. Look, look. There you go, right there. Say, go. How's your line? No, no, I'm not. Okay. Only after I gave them this piece of straw did they do what I wanted. There we go. Oh, he said it. Yeah. This week's Torah portion is called Yisrael, and that was the name of Moses' father-in-law. It's like the famous question, which came first, the Torah portion or the father-in-law? Yeah, that question's not famous, but actually, the answer is the Torah portion. Yisrael was a highly respected individual, even before his daughter married Moses. It may not sound like a profession to you, but Yisrael was a master idolater. Actually, it makes more sense to say Yisrael was a master of idolatry. Idolatry was like his thing, bro. In Yiddish terms, it's called a koch. Idolatry was like his koch, bro. Like, someone who really digs cars. Yeah, just like someone who knows cars can go on about their different models and features and specifications. Yisrael knew the ins and outs of all the false deities out there, and he not only served them, but we're told he even fattened cows for idolatrous slaughter and sacrifice. Oh, okay, so... Moses' father-in-law wasn't a good guy. Oh no, he was a great guy. Oh, oh, so well, in, uh, in that case, you know where, like, I can pick up some idols for cheap? There's this place, I think it's called Terach's shop. Oh, oh, never mind, it closed down. Forget it. One sec, what? The dark times and the low places should never hold you back. Yisrael experimented with all other types of religious beliefs and practices and, uh, yeah, that kind of impure stuff. Eventually, he realized this is all nonsense and he embraced monotheism, accepting the one true God, THE God, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. The God keeping you breathing right now. When he found the truth, his previous experiences didn't deter him from accepting the truth as fact, from embracing the truth, and starting to live a life of truth. Yisrael was basically at rock bottom, and he became at the greatest of heights, becoming a full-fledged Jew, and even having the Torah portion in which we receive the Torah. Yes, the Ten Commandments, the big famous event at Sinai, this week's Torah portion, named after him. This is a simple to understand, yet extremely powerful and important lesson. Of course you shouldn't go purposely make mistakes. That's not even possible. How do you make a mistake on purpose? Of course you shouldn't go doing the wrong thing in order to eventually learn that the wrong thing is the wrong thing and to start doing the right thing. And seriously, if that's the lesson you took from this video, then unsubscribe. Just don't do that, please. But all of us have made mistakes. We have sinned. The whiteboard behind us isn't so white and clean. It's a little more filthy. But that shouldn't stop you. The mistakes that you have made are mistakes that you have made. No. <sighs> Instead of allowing those mistakes to pull you behind physically, emotionally, or mentally, Realize that they're in the past and not as demons in the shadows, but as experience that you learned from. Torah was given to us on a mountain. A mountain is the same earth that's on the ground, except that the ground is elevated, thus making it a mountain. God gives us the Torah and says, here, in this world, you are going to encounter lowly things. Things which their mode of elevation is just by staying away from them, as we spoke about in the late Parashat in the past. But what happens if we messed up? by not letting it pull you back. Even the filth on the ground can be elevated and godly revelation can happen over there. May the greatest revelation in history be replaced with an even greater revelation. Mashiach now.